The native MIDI mapping in Ableton Live is pretty straightforward, but it comes with a big limitation, saving global MIDI mapping presets and recall them in different sets as well. So I developed a Max for Live device, which lets you use your faders and knobs of your MIDI controller and create presets you can quickly recall inside of Rack. So for example, we got this Creative Synth Bus Rack here, and I just gonna drag and drop the preset I created in here and instantly my controller is mapped up to the eight dials I got in here. Obviously the macro controls, if you could ha would have more or less, um, the whole display and the whole number of controllers here will show you and will be displayed automatically. So um, I can take this um, one here as well and just drag and drop this into a different rack here, the DJ tools. And you can see now in the DJ tools that already my launch XL, my launch control XL, the first eight faders, uh, eight dials here are mapped up to those macros already. So let me show you how you can set this up. So first of all, this is a Max for Life device. Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live. You will then need to get my global MIDI map rack pack, which is for um, audio effects and for MIDI effects, and it works globally. So you can quickly change settings even inside the uh, racks, or you can store and recall your own racks um, quick and easy. Okay, so first of all, we are using direct MIDI input here. We are not using the control surface um, section here. We are using the lower section here, and you need to make sure that you have your track in for your controller being activated. You would then need to create a MIDI track and you will always have this one MIDI track in an Ableton Live set or in the Ableton Live set, you want to use those um, mappings. So you need to select the your <laughs> controller here. You want to set your monitor to in. So always, and we can see that if I'm moving something here, I am already receiving MIDI in here. If you set your monitor to in, it's always being passed through. On this MIDI track, you would need to have the forward to global MIDI map device because this is sending out the MIDI or forwarding the MIDI to our presets here. So let's let us create a new track here. It could be a MIDI track or an audio track. Obviously for the MIDI stuff, you need to have the MIDI device for a MIDI rack and for the audio effects, you want to use the version for the audio. So let's start with the MIDI one. We just can drag and drop it on here. And I now group this device. So now we're in a group and I now need to refresh the device here, which I can do by pressing R for refreshing. And I now need to set up all the dials I want to use. So let's start with eight dials um, and maybe take the second row or maybe we do 16 here just for showing purposes. So um, we need, and it will always follow the macros which is there in the nested parent rack here. So if we have 16 macros, which are available since Ableton 11, you can use this here. Okay, so we now need to set up and turn on all the inputs here. So we are sending, that's important for later on, we are sending on CC pipe one, and we are receiving on number one here as well. And you can see that by the colors, I'm gonna explain the pipe concept afterwards, um, a little later in this video, I mean. Okay, so now we're gonna switch all those on and map those. So we just gonna have, we have to activate those and we need to press S or we can manually put in the CC number here as well, but obviously it is detecting it. So we can just move the dials we want to map here. Maybe let's do the bottom one for those. Um, it makes a little bit more sense quickly just selecting all, moving and sending and receiving the CCs in here. And do this for the top row as well. So I just um, press 
turn on the the slot here i press s i move the dial and it's detecting which on which midi cc it is sending and this way bam it's all being received now and we can see see that if we um, leave this menu here they are not being grayed out anymore because we switched them on and you can see um, those dials are being um, mapped to those macros and being forwarded to control the macros in this particular set. I now created already a preset here, so I could call this um, XL launch control um, middle, mid and top row maybe. And I want to save this in my user library. Um, just gonna save this in here. And now I have this in here and maybe I just put this in my presentation folder here. So I now have this preset being stored and saved in here. If I now open up a MIDI effect rack, let's have a look. We got some effect racks here, or maybe we need to create some quickly. So if we just use a pitch, for example, let's delete this rack here first. Um, we, I'm just gonna create a random rack here and map a few things. So if that would be um, a preset of yours and stuff would be already set up we could now have this as an example for an effect rack you're going to use and now all i need to do i need to take the preset i created um, beforehand and i need to drag and drop it right into the chain of the parent rack here so as we only have three things set up here we could set this down maybe like this you can see it's already taking over the names and when i move those faders here those buttons here the dials the top dial you can see it's already mapped to those macros here i can now record automations and uh, it wouldn't interfere um, the same would work for audio effects here as well. So let's quickly do this. If we take, for example, the DJ tools here, we need to open up the chain view here just to be able to drag stuff inside this rack. And we can drag and drop our preset anywhere here in this rack. So for example, um, ah, it's a, it's a MIDI effect. So we need, we would need to do this for the audio effect here as well. We can just quickly create one and let's make sure to receive those values here. Bam, there we go, there we go. We just need the first three here. We can leave the map menu and you can see it's already mapped to those values here and i could just save this store this as a preset and recall this again when i'm opening up a new set let's quickly do this just for showing purposes so um maybe let's match this up with um the fourth one here as well just making sure so um let's call this uh middle first four on the xl Okay, so we're gonna save this one as a preset in our user library. Just copying that in and as well, we're gonna take this one um, into this part here. So now again, if we are opening up a preset here, so for example, we are gonna use an audio effect rack let's take something different so you can see that it works straight out of the box so i'm opening up the chain view i select my preset here so middle first four that's the one i just created it automatically quickly syncs up if i do some new syncing and patching here i need to hit refresh so it's taking over the names and i'm already able to control those four dials i don't need to map anything here and the fourth one isn't listening because I haven't set it up properly. Let's quickly do this. So we have this one. Ah, it's, it's being set up to the wrong MIDI message here. So um, 
let's have it like this so all the three and you can see that hopefully quite well all those four are already mapped if the preset is set up right you can just quickly drag and drop that into any rack midi for midi effect racks and audio for the audio effect racks so we could now um save even the whole preset here so if we say filter pump um with mapping let's quickly save this one here and we can put this one in our user library and we want to copy those files or a few files and where is it filter 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 <laughs> there we go no we want it in our user library filter pump there it is let's set this to um, our max for life presentation um, tag here as well so if we are now creating a new um said we need to have this sending device here this forwarding device always receiving and sending stuff as well so what we want to do ideally we want to save this track here so we don't have to create this track all the time and then we are starting to create a new set and pulling in those presets we are we created already okay so um let's save this track here as well in the user library let's call this um launch xl in which it's its name already it's a little bit that there it is max for life presentation tag as well so now we are gonna we're opening up a new ableton live set and we all we need to do is we need to pull in this track here so this is just the forwarding track and it's set up already you can see it's receiving it's not receiving midi because I need to have my launch control in user mode because we are not using the remote script we're using direct midi so you can use any controller here which is sending midi control continuous control data into a track so we have this here now we can see stuff is coming in so now i'm able to recall the presets i created so for example i made this um filter pump mapping here an effect rack i could just drag and drop this anywhere and this is listening to the stuff in if i move the right diets here the the diets in the middle so it's already mapped without me going into the midi mapping menu this is truly a global thing how you can set up presets here i showed you now a two ways on how to do the stuff so for example if you're not uh, want to create and store and save the whole racks with the device in there but only pull the device in there that would be quick as well if you have an audio effect here let's just um, use this one for example and now we are able to put in the preset we created so for example um, xl launch control mid row in here and we need to open up the chain view sorry so if we drag and drop this anywhere it just needs to sit somewhere and we need this ah because it's an audio device we need the audio effect and it's matching up already with the names and stuff and you can see only the top four are um lightening up or they the bottom rows are grayed out because we haven't set um, up midi mappings here in the preset so i'm now already able quickly to control those things if i need to record automations etc um do stuff in here um this is quick and easy so if you want to go one step more deeper so uh first of all this is um max for life pack you can get this um if you follow the links in the video description and or if you look at it uh, at uh, abletonrama.com if you want to go deeper so this is now becoming a little bit um more complex here so the basic concept i showed you the basic concept if that's for you you can stay there and um, you don't need to go deeper if you want to go deeper you can actually create several midi pipes here so for example you got and i uh, mentioned this earlier we have several pipes we can send on so for example if you want to track where you're sending on pipe one you can have this one here and if you want another one for example where you want to send on pipe 
two, you can have the track color changing as well to depending on to the pipe you selected. And we can do this as well here for, um, for example, for a MIDI um, device here or for, the, for a MIDI rack. Um, let's take the same mappings here just to just to show you. So if this is being set to number two here as well, this is now receiving from this track here from this sending pipe and um, the first one is being receiving or sending and receiving on the first pipe. So you could actually set up multiple pipes and you can automate those pipes. So you could have another dial being set up to uh, control um, which pipe stuff should be sent to or routed to. Um, I hope this is not confusing. Just to make sure you are even able to control quite a number of different effects here if you are mapping up and MIDI mapping the pipe sending here to some dials as well. So for example, if you have a live set where you want to set up your controller to send to different effect racks at a different point. You can just automate um, the pipe it's sending to, meaning the device it's sending to. So just to show you now we are controlling the first one because we are sending on pipe one. So we are controlling this one here. And if we change the sending track to send to the pipe two, we're gonna send to this device here and it's not going to be received on the first one which is set to pipe one i hope that makes sense again if you are mapping up more stuff and then if you change the names so for example if we go in here um, um, change i just put that in you will see the name didn't change down below here you need to hit refresh and then you can see the name changed here. So if I turn that on just to make this more obvious, this one is changing the name after you hit refresh. It needs to refresh the names when you change stuff. But if you just drag it, drop it in, it's con uh, instantly will take over the names, take over the MIDI preset and mappings you created. So have a look on uh, the link provided in the video description below here if you want to check out more about those devices here. Um, global MIDI mapping now possible in Ableton Live. Nice one. Take care.